Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Jost and I will talk to you today about uh, Prose Media and Freeflow and how to couple that with Precise and Dumux. Now let me go over to my slides. And I think I will also show myself to you so you, you know who is talking to you. <clears throat> and so let's start. What I will show you today is uh, joint work together with Miriam Mill and also for other collaborators within the SFB 1313. And in this SFB, what we do is we work on interface driven multi field processes in Porous Media, flow, transport, and then deformation. So there's a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of things are interface driven, so this fits very well with this interface coupling that you can enable or use with Precise. I work at the moment at like, different yeah, problems or different applications. One application is uh, fractured process media, where you have uh, yeah, a fluid filled fracture, like here, these like, blue enclosures, and you inject liquid, so they react, they open and close depending on the pressure field and so on. And then you have some kind of yeah, change, some deformation in the produce medium. As an example, you can also see on the right, this green part is a porous medium. And this is what you have here with the disc is uh, yeah, the model for the liquid in the, uh, in the fracture. And yeah, this has, uh, as like marked here now, a sharp interface where you can use this precise coupling. Uh, the other kind of the challenge is that it's like a different dimensional or mixed dimensional approach that you have lower dimensions in the fracture than in the surrounding porous medium. And uh, that's, that's quite ch challenging and quite interesting. But what I actually want to talk to you about today is like the coupling of free and porous media flow. That means uh, uh, that uh, we have like a, a free flow domain, a standard flow as you know, like modeled with with, with Navier-Stokes, Stokes equations. And then in the produce medium, we also have flow, but everything yeah, happens a bit slower than in the free flow due to this nature of the, of the produce medium. Now, this is also like a very important application as it appears in industry, in drying processes, or also like in environmental engineering, if you want to know how some uh, pollutants also would tra travel or be distributed in the river or the riverbed pandanis, for example. And uh, this today then is in a joint work with Kilian Weiss of Bernd Flemish, who developed also a software tool for porous media flow in, in Stuttgart, and Elisa Eggenweiler and Irina Rieberg, who work on the mathematical modeling and especially on the coupling conditions for these uh, yeah, kind of flows. So, then, where's my mouse? So what you hear in common for sh is uh, this sharp interface, so we can use precise again, and that's also yeah what you want to do. Uh, the the uh, yeah, outline of the talk is like that I will just shortly introduce you to the governing equations that we use and potential coupling conditions that you can use. Then give you a short overview of the current implementation and some results you can or we could obtain with it so far. And then we end with conclusion as out and outlook as usual. So let's start with the equations. Um, there's nothing too special in the free flow domain, as I already said. You can model that, for example, with Stokes flow, the standard flow conditions. And when I talk about free flow, yeah, quantities are usually put in F, F for free flow on there, so you know which in which domain or which subdomain we are in. And in the porous media domain. We have like the equation for mass conservation and Darcy's law. Uh, in this sense, also nothing special. It's like a very standard model. And in case you're not too familiar with Perse Media, it's a very short introduction here. You find I uh, see a sponge. Like you can find it in the kitchen. This is at least the sponge that I found in mine. And if you look into such a sponge or inspect it very closely, you see it has like a, yeah, Part of the structure, you have a lot of holes and also a lot of parts. This is this plastic thing, plastic stuff your rubber is, or rubber your, your sponge is made of, where the flow cannot flow through, but it has to kind of flow around. 
which is here like should be modeled by these black dots. But sometimes you can see that it's normal flow, but with a lot of obstacles, obstacles due to that a lot of yeah shear stress and so on. So a lot of resistance. So in, in, in total, the the fluid has yeah, well, more work to do to get through. That's why usually flow processes are slower in there. But in, since you don't want to really model that with this kind of mesh, for example, with so many obstacles, because it would be, give you a kind of ridiculous mesh and increase the yeah yeah the compute, computational work that would, you, you would have to do, you derive Darcy's law by upscaling that uh, I've drawn, yeah down here already. So it's basically like this yeah upscaled version of the momentum equation for force media. Break. This k is the permeability, which kind of tells you how easy or hard it is <clears throat> for your flow to get through the porous medium in a certain direction. And yeah, here I made my life a bit simple. This is like the 2D uh, equation for 3D. It's, I mean, it's straightforward to extend it. Um, uh, but you, yeah, it's not limited to just Navier's uh, to Stokes. You can also use Navier Stokes if you want. There's like at least for the partitioned approach, usually not a big different in that in the sense for the implementation and so on it's basically the same coupling uh, parameters and coupling iterations that you need obviously might change and here at least for what i show now i also make my life a bit easier i also written that here down i work with incompressible and for the moment time and independent flow now for the interface conditions uh, a very common choice are the yeah, these conditions that I show you here. So the first one is, I would say, quite intriguing. It's mass conservation, so mass flux over this interface between free and porous medium uh, has to be conserved. Then you have like a balance of normal forces, kind of to make sure that you have a momentum conservation. That's also nothing too special or too surprising. Uh, what is more special is like the third equation. That's kind of the slip velocity that you have when you have yeah, flow in your free flow domain and fl also flow in your porous media domain. There's a flow in both domains, but yeah, as I said, the flow in the porous media domain is usually much slower, so you will have some kind of slip velocity. And this here is already like the sim they have, say, simplified model. This is like the Beavers Joseph Seffman condition. Uh, so where this Tangential velocity only acts like as a boundary condition. Actually, there you can also go for like the Beavers Joseph version of that, where you also have the uh, velocity of the porous medium somewhere in here. But quite often uh, we can neglect that because this flow velocity is so small anyway. And okay, when we want to couple this now, what is also say a bit nicer for us for the Beavers Joseph Seffman condition is that we only have to exchange the pressure and the normal velocity or the mass flux if it is a compressible fluid. There's like one limitation. Uh, this has been purely derived for parallel flow, but uh, so in some sense it means like the flow and the porous medium and the free flow domain has to go in like the same direction. But on the other hand, you also have like the fitting parameter alpha here that you have to derive from measurements. And that gives you kind of a freedom to fix also your flow conditions for non-parallel flow. So in practice, at least, these conditions are, or these coupling conditions are used also for non-parallel flow because the results are convincing. And you can do uh, the, this also in a different way. These are like more general interface conditions now that have been derived recently also within the SFB by the Sagenweiler and Irina Riebak. And the first two equations haven't really changed much. They, this is mass conservation again, and the uh, momentum uh, conservation is written slightly differently, but uh, yeah, that it's. And then the, the real yeah, change is in this tangential velocity, slip velocity equation, where you now get some gradients. So the gradient of the uh, yeah, velocity component, the first velo the velocity in x, Direction. So technically, this vector uh, symbol here should disappear, and the gradient of the pressure in y direction, and you get this parameter epsilon that comes from your porous medium. It's like say uh, 
a physical property, but you also get this M1 and this N, which can be a matrix, which are like boundary layer constants that you have to derive for your porous medium at hand. Or well, derived that you have to compute once, but you can do that with uh, yeah, special, specialized solvers or tools for that. Um, here, coupling gets a bit more tricky or a bit more involved, at least because you have to yeah, exchange the normal velocity in some way, some pressure, but also some gradient. So you have all the information at hand that you need to evaluate the coupling conditions at the right, right, right position or sub, right subdomain where you actually need it. So uh, it seems to be a bit more involved, but it has like, it's more, in some sense also more flexible. Since this is, has been derived for arbitrary flow direction, there's no limitation on what you can simulate with that. So it's, it's especially suited for penetrating flow and not just parallel flow. Now let's come back to the actual coupling or implementation of this whole thing and some of the results we have. So what we do is we use on the one hand Dune. Dune is a software toolbox for solving partial differential equations. It yeah, stands for Distributed and Unified Numerics Environment. It's basically a number of pre-compiled modules in C++ that give you standard assembly routines, standard routines for generating and also handling different kinds of meshes. It can be yeah, tensor product based meshes, triangular meshes, and a lot of yeah, ex yeah, extra modules that extend the, the, the yeah, capabilities of that. And uh, what we then use in the end is Dumux, which in turn is like a, a kind of one of these specialized modules that base, is based on Dune. This is a kind of what Dumux stands for. It says here yeah, like it stands for Dune for multi-phase component scale physics and so on, flow and transport and process media. So in some sense, it specializes everything for this application that are common for process media with also typical discretizations. Uh, spatial and time discretizations, um, but still gives you quite some freedom to kind of plug together the tools that you need to solve the problem at hand that you have here or that you want to solve. Um, it was also quite nice for the coupling. It has a monolithic coupling available because like, these coupling processes, as also the title of the SFB set, are present everywhere. They have some idea or some framework for that already. So what we want to do is kind of, we want to make life with the coupling maybe a bit easier, but on the way there, we can also always use the monolithic coupling for easier problems and see if we do the right thing. And yeah, both of these frameworks are open source tools, so that's very nice, so we can extend them and hopefully also contribute something to them. Um, that's like for this module uh, idea, that's the rough idea how this looks like. This is like for Dune. Uh, the Dune framework is this, yeah, say, red box, and then you have these modules, Dune Common, which is like the base framework that is then also extended or accommodated by further modules like Dune Grid, which does you, gives you this grid handling and a very specialized submodules like Dune Subgrid that can create you, yeah, create a, or split the mesh in several sub meshes. Then Dumux is, yeah, as I said, this module based on that that includes a lot of these modules for this for solving porous media flow and it can also include some of these modules like this Dune subgrid as an optional dependency to extend its capabilities. And what we have written now is a module by itself that's as it's called Dumux presets at the moment, where we implement like this layer to communicate with pre, uh, with precise and Dumux to give the data that is needed for the coupling and also to, uh, what is in there at the moment is some tests and so on. And this is a kind of say the current state and what we would hope for that is in the near future we can tightly integrate this Dumux precise uh, yeah, what's called this module. So it's yeah it lives very close to Dumux as it's because it's like where it's it's aiming for we want to make it very easy accessible for the typical Dumux user. And yeah, for the current status, if you have seen my talk last year, that was also about if with porous media free flow coupling, 
Uh, this is with like the updated and extended list. We have quite some features already in there that we can couple or exchange scalar data and in, use this in DoMux. That the couplings, the different couplings provided by Precise work. We also have the DoMux uh, Precise adapter in like a repository very close to the DoMux repository, which is very nice. And yeah, we also we have managed that Precise is an optional dependency for DoMux. So the DoMux developers don't want to have like a hard dependency on Precise. And that we could yeah, also in this sense now easily realize by making it an own do module or do mux module as you've seen in the slide before uh, what is kind of new it is also yeah, consistently ongoing is like that we integrated automatic tests and code quality, code quality checks but you probably don't see anyway that much if you want to use uh, that at some point um it's like has been i think testing last time and is still testing because uh, we also extended to yeah several space dimensions is this coupling via vectorial data uh, yeah, it's sometimes permanently ongoing work is this convenience function that you might need for simplifying the coupling. That, uh, that we are working on the tighter integration into DoMux. And at the moment, what is really a uh, work in progress for me is like to use or to work with arbitrarily shaped interfaces, not just flat interfaces, as you have, have yeah, indicated before, and the integration of these new coupling conditions. For example, that I have shown. So at the moment, I just work with the very classical reverse Joseph Seffman conditions, but uh, we work hard to get the new coupling conditions of uh, Eigenweiler and Rebag very soon too. Uh, what I had actually also noticed last time, what we dropped, is that this interface of the adapter for the user should be close to resize, because yeah, I also realized that the typical user we aim for is the Dumux user, not the precise user. So the interface should be very close to the interface people are used from DoomHux, where we kind of mimic or try to mimic as far as it makes sense behavior of the yeah, similar concept they have already because for yeah, monolithically coupled simulations, they also have something what they call a coupling manager. So we try to do something with a partition coupling with, with a very similar yeah, user experience. Now, uh, for, for the results, uh, in 2D, it works quite fine. Uh, There's also results that have been, yeah, at least this plot node, but the results have been published sometime last year. And that's it. you see the monolithic solution on the right hand side, the solution coupled uh, with precise, and it looks very nice. We used to try different coupling uh, uh, yeah, methods, parallel implicit, serial implicit, and it worked very well. So we were happy with, the, with these results. Uh, we could also extend this now through 3D. This is similar, or basically the same test case, but with an additional space dimension. And I hope you see this more or less that this, there's arrows, there's a kind of flow go coming towards your front right. And also in the bottom part, part here, in the, it's the porous medium, and your flow goes in and goes out again. And so this is like from the physical behavior what we would expect. Uh, this, this arrows kind of just indicate your flow direction. This is not really showing the, the, the magnitude of the flow. I had to scale it a bit, but you can see there's, that there's actually something happening. Um, something that is also a work in progress, or was I mentioned, is like having non smooth interfaces. So, like on the left, uh, where you have like a step, or on the right, you have like a sine curve as for the interface. Uh, so, we have this, uh, it has been already implemented in this monolithic coupling. And I'm just extending that at the moment, at the very moment, also for the precise DoomUX adapter. And I hope that I can show you results for that, but I uh, didn't come so far. There's still some bug in my implementation. But I hope that I will show you or can show you that in the very near future. So this brings me already to the end of my presentation. Uh, so what you've seen we, is that we use uh, yeah, Prose Media evolving framework do works here and this partition coupling works very nicely here. We have very good agreement with the monolithic solutions and we also see very big potential for parallel simulations in 3D since we then also can facilitate the parallel uh, yeah, features of precise. The code though needs some more polishing as it has some bugs and it's not super great yet. And it also, what I didn't tell or talk much about, it will need some extra work for true high performance computing. 
since we don't really have good iterative solvers for the flow domain in, into MOOCs at the moment. And so very soon, I hope, we will give you or yeah, provide this to MOOCs preset adapter at least in the first version to the public. Then we aim for more challenging problems. The three degree problems already go in that direction, but also time dependent problems. And for example, multi phase flow. If like one problem or one way to maybe avoid this problem this is bad, um, at the moment are quite bad. Linear solvers for the flow problems, it would be to use another kind of free flow solver like open form. But uh, we have to see if that makes sense because also within the SFB, we try to keep the different used solvers to a minimum. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, if you have further questions or yeah, uh, are interested in the work, please contact me or talk to me uh, after the talk when, uh, yeah, when we have this get together. You can also find further information on the work, on our work, on the work of the SFB, on the SFB homepage and further information on DoMOOCs on the DoMOOCs homepage.